Hey, here we go again. This is Christy Mattoon with Mind Rewire. Um, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Subscribe to my Mind Rewire if this information is helping you. Um, if you want notifications for when I go live, um, click the bell. And today what we're doing is um, part two of an effective prayer and a how to pray and, and a way to pray. And this is kind of like manifestation modified or amplified. So um, subscribe and hang in there with me. We're going to be talking about prayer. All right, here we go. Prayer part two. This is actually about inner preparation for prayer. What do you do to get yourself set up and ready to pray? If anything, do you ever even think about that? That would be probably the biggest question. Have you ever thought about what you can do to get yourself set up for an effective prayer? It's actually kind of an interesting question. When your inner preparation matches um, the atmosphere and the mood around you of being ready to pray, it actually amplifies the effect of prayer. And actually your inner preparation is going to set the stage for everything around you to be able to amplify um, the effect of your prayers. And so um, we talk about it in tenses of, you know, just the way, you know, maybe it's it's your prayer station, right? You got your little table set up with all your, you know, Jesus statue or whatever, you know, your thing is on there. Um, I've seen people with little statues of Buddha or, you know, Indian um, princesses and that kind of stuff. Whatever your thing is, whatever your modality for getting yourself into prayer, this is going to change the way you think about it a little bit, I think. Um, so what we're trying to do is we're actually trying to calibrate your heart with your mind. That's what your inner preparation should be doing. And if you're thinking that all the stuff that you've got laid out around you on your table is going to align your heart and mind, you know, maybe it does, maybe it doesn't, but this will actually amplify and help that whole process too. So we want to calibrate your heart which is going to actually put you in sync to be able to communicate with those spiritual forces. And it's going to put you in sync to be able to talk to God, to hear from God. Um, you know, some people say they've got angels all around them. I believe in that. I believe they're all around us, aiding us and helping us all the time. And if you are prepared internally to be a witness to that kind of testimony, and if you're staying in that place all the time, this just amplifies and modifies all of it. Um, sometimes, and people will actually say this too, sometimes their preparation, um, not as just a part of the prayer, but it's such an important part of the prayer that without it, their prayers are ineffective. Their prayers fall flat. They don't really mean much because sometimes we just go straight into praying and just saying and saying and saying. It never seems to go anywhere. So we're taking a little bit of a look at why that is. So this environment that you're setting up is internal. It's inside of you. It's an internal environment, internal dial that you can turn up or down. And you're setting it up so that you actually have a yearning. You have a yearning for the spirit. Right? It puts you in a sense of awe. It puts you in that place where you're just like, ugh. If you know what I'm talking about, do you know that feeling? When you're sitting down and you're just so in tune and you're so in alignment, Everything's just kind of tingly and feels good. Your head, your heart. And then when you're ready to talk to God, you instantly hear his voice back. You can ask, you can ask dire questions in this place. You can ask, I don't even know, even the meaning of life. What is it all for? Right? If you ever hit your knees, you know, you're just like going crazy and you hit your knees and just start screaming at God, why? And then you wonder why he never answers you back. Think about talking to maybe a parent. Oh, there's a spider on my roof. <laughs> Sorry about that. Think about talking to one of your parents. Like their head is off somewhere else and you're just kind of like in your own little distraction and you run up to mom or dad and you're like, I need, I want, ah. How do those conversations usually end? Nobody's listening to anybody. Nobody's really speaking or making any sense. It's just kind of like this clash of words and, and then everybody goes their own way in a huff. When you set yourself up internally, this inner preparation will align, your, align you so well and it'll actually start aligning people around you. It'll align you with spirit, with God. 
in such an effective manner that when you do start talking, he's actually listening to you. And you will get a response. I would be shocked if you didn't. Um, let me check through my notes here. So one of the things you have to have in order to pray effectively, besides this internal preparation, and I'll walk you through what that means to me in just a second, um, is you have to have a consistency, and it has to be continuous. Prayer needs to be this continuous thing. It's a continuous action that you are doing and doing and doing. Every movement in prayer, in this continuous action, continuous action, leads towards an end goal. Every prayer links on to the prayer before it. Every prayer that you pray about the same thing, every word that you speak, attaches to the one in back of it. And it keeps the momentum moving forward. So all the motions and all the moments in prayer stack together. And that's actually what creates your outcome. It's the quantity of the exhortation that turns into quality that becomes the effective prayer. It's not just a one and done thing. It's something that you have to do. And you have to stick with it until you see that thing come in front of you. And there's a lot of um, practices that say, just pray it once, say it once. If God heard you, he heard you. If he didn't, that means it wasn't meant to be. I don't believe that. I believe that when you stick with it, if it's something that's truly on your heart, God's wanting you to go after it. He's wanting you to come at it full till. And if that means going after it in prayer over and over again, and then when he's showing you what to do, and this is the other thing about continuous prayer. Sometimes in that prayer, when you're talking to him about what it is you're wanting and what you're trying to achieve and what you're doing, what your actions are, setting your heart right, you'll get new information as to what to do next. And if you don't go into that prayer with that receptivity in your mind, how will you get the next piece to go on in your goal? So you have to really think about it that way too. Stay in constant prayer. There's actually a verse in the, in the Bible that says, pray unceasingly. Pray unceasingly. Within the structure of the church, and I've heard this uh, spoken about many times, different folks from the pulpit, talking about this verse and this concept of praying unceasingly. And they'll say that's what it says, and they'll talk about it for a minute, and then in the same sentence they'll say, but there's no way you can really do that. So, like, how does that work? Well, I think you really can do it or it wouldn't be in there. I think it's one of those things, and I had a shaman tell me this years ago. She told me that it's like walking with one foot in heaven and one foot on earth. And when you can keep that balance in between the two, the prayer is constant. It goes out all the time. Every word out of your mouth turns into a form of prayer. Everything that you say, everything that you think is a part of a continual prayer, which is why it has to stay on a positive flow. It has to stay in a positive tone. If you start getting negative, that means your prayers are negative. You're sending out that negative message. You're asking for negative things to happen in, in your life. Does that make sense? So we always want to pray unceasingly. You want to stay in that mode and stay in that thought process of, hey, if I'm talking to God all the time with every word that comes out of my mouth, I want it to be positive, and I want it to be the best the best possible thing that I could be praying for, about, you know, to whatever you want to, however you're looking at it right now, you want it to be the best possible value possible with the highest vibration you can muster. Another verse in the Bible that, um, I, asked, I actually love this verse a lot, it says, a frequent fervent prayer... Of, or the, sorry, let me start that over. The frequent, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. The frequent, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. What does that mean? The frequent, fervent. If you are praying frequently and you are fervent in your prayer, you know what you want, you're saying what you want, what you need, what you're looking at, what you're interested in, you're saying it with conviction, you're righteous, you're right, and you're just. You're on the good side, right? You think about things in a positive way. You have a good heart. You have. You show it by good actions. You're staying in alignment with a positive flow. Avails means it's going to get you far. It's going to take you places where you wouldn't go otherwise. 
right? It avails much. It brings good things to you. It brings many good things to you. All right, so we want to look at it in that respect. So how do you set this up? How do you do that inner preparation? What do you do for that? So I'm going to tell you what I do to set up my inner preparation. What are the steps I go through um, and what it takes to get yourself inwardly prepared for an effective prayer. Innerly prepared for an effective prayer. So the first part of it is breathing. We talk about breath work a lot. Breath work is so important. If you are not breathing functionally, you're causing all kinds of chaos in your system and you might not even recognize it or know it. So a functional breath is a huge expansive through the rib expansion through the rib cage. You want it to open out in a 360 degree manner. When you exhale, you want your exhale to be a little bit longer than your inhale. So when you're practicing intentional breath, the inhale should be four or five seconds long, and then your exhale should be um, probably six or seven seconds long. Make sure your exhale is longer than your inhale. That's the important part of it. When I'm doing intentional breath on a daily basis, I set my alarm clock to go off three or four times um, probably a day, if not like every couple of hours. When that alarm goes off, I'm practicing my breathing. The intention is the breath, no other reason, right? So I'm just inhaling, I'm feeling my body with oxygen, opening out my rib cage, and then that slow exhale. What this will do for you is calm your autonomic nervous system. Autonomic nervous system. It'll calm that down. It calms down the vagus nerve, right? It'll actually help you reset the vagus nerve. You calm that down by this longer um, exhale. It'll help slow your heart rate. It'll bring you back in alignment, bring you back in tune. So before I pray, I do five of those. Five intentional breaths. The next thing I'm doing is sometimes I'm chanting a name of God. Um, God biblically has many, many names. And depending on your religion or what part of the world you come from, probably has many, many, many more names. So if you're a chanter and that kind of stuff does anything for you, pick a name. Chant it while you're breathing. So on the inhale, you're chanting the name. On the exhale, you're just releasing. Right? Inhale, chant. Exhale, release. It's a nice, slow, effective thing to do. If you're not into that, think of a place in your mind. Go to a place where you just get super calm by nature anyway. Um, I'll tell you what mine is. is up in Maine on a peninsula in um, Booth Bay Harbor. Beautiful, beautiful place. Booth Bay Harbor is up above Bar Harbor, if you know anything about Maine. And out on the end of this peninsula, there is a property called Spruce Point Inn that I worked at for a number of years, my husband and I did. And out on the point of this peninsula, there was a big grouping of um, evergreen trees. And then there was a picnic table, and there was a place where we used to go do um, lobster bakes. And we'd pull the ocean water into these tanks and heat it up and cook lobster and all kinds of stuff. And it was so fun. At night, we'd go and lay on that picnic table and just look up at the sky and the vastness of the sky above you in Maine is different than anywhere you have ever ever been before um, and it's just huge and it's dark there there's no lights from any cities because you're out on this peninsula and the stars above your head are just incredible one of the biggest things I always noticed about it was at a certain time of year it was almost and you could see it wasn't even almost you could see the edge of the galaxy and if you stood there just staring at it or laid there staring at it, you would see shooting stars all over the place. And to me, there was nothing more peaceful or nothing more calming. And to this day, when I get upset, when something happens, that's the first place I think to go inside my head, inside my body. And it just calms everything right back down. So number one, you're doing breathing, five breaths. Number two, you're either chanting the names of God or thinking of a place in your head that just takes you to that peace. Even a place you look at in Maine, it, it just is awe-inspiring. It just literally puts you in that feeling of awe. All right, and then you're just sitting there for a couple of minutes. No more. One or two minutes and that's it. And while you're doing that sitting, you're just going to focus your, an, uh, your awareness on an aspect of God. So I've got this peace flowing through my system. I've got this breath expansive going in and out. And I'm just focusing on an aspect of God. What are aspects of God? Right? We're thinking 
um, spirit, God, nature. You're thinking peace, love, joy, patience, kindness, goodness, um, faithfulness, graciousness, hope, right? Caring. Something that lifts you up and gives you a little bit higher of a vibration. And then you just go from there right into your prayer. And that will be our next video. That's going to be part three. So come back tomorrow for part three. Go ahead and subscribe to Mind Rewire. Click that bell if you want notifications. And I will be talking to you again soon.